A third demo shop has now been unlocked. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, we've got the USA Demo Shop, we've had the European Demo Shop for a couple of years now, and now we have the brand new Gibson UK Demo Shop. So we've got Nashville, Netherlands, and London. So for the inaugural week, we're going to start with the UK Demo Shop this time. They started off with 16 guitars. We had a standard 50s in burnt orange satin finish. That is big news for the UK guys, because that means they are capable of refinishing guitars and reworking them. The Netherlands shop, we've seen them occasionally play with plastics and whatnot, but I don't think we've seen them do refinishes. But this looks like one of those standard fadeds that might have been redone in a new kind of amberish hue. It's interesting. I especially like this guitar looking at this angle. Next, they had a pretty cool Smokehouse Burst Les Paul Studio. Not all Smokehouse is the same. I like how this one has a little bit more black mixed into it, on top of having cool wood grain. This Les Paul Jr. at 1100 bucks, everything included, was kind of interesting. So I had to scroll through all these photos, and I had found that it was damaged. We had some finish checking right here by our pickup, and some by our knobs. But most importantly, some right here by the fretboard. That was definitely dropped in transit. So with the USA shop being factory seconds, essentially, I'm pretty sure the UK and European shops are more so dedicated to things that got damaged while in transit to dealers that have already crossed the pond and or were at one of Gibson's showcases in these countries. Next up, they also had an interesting camo pullover, a lefty ES330 that sold pretty quick. You don't see many of those things out there. And then well over a thousand dollars off on a white Les Paul Custom. So maybe not as crazy as the launch of the European demo shop having prototypes and whatnot, but we'll have to see what they get in the future. Now let's get over to the Mott collection. We'll kick it off with Moonvine Burst. I was tempted to pick this one up. It's an interesting green color. Kind of reminds me of that ES335 that we had documented a while back. You've got your double black bobbin pickups with your pearloid pick guard, golden historic style knobs. For a Les Paul Custom, it's unique, it's different. But this right here is the feature that made me go, ah, I'll let someone else have it. I hate those small button tuners. Yeah, it's easy enough to change, but then you're messing with originality. But hey, we've got a cool black stinger back here and a yellow serial number. However, due to having that extremely extended stinger, they were unable to burst the neck. So that leads you into an interesting conundrum. Do you like stingers better or do you like the burst on the neck? For me, it depends on the guitar. And I guess it kind of makes sense due to the fact that this is a perimeter burst, but they gave it one of those Gibson USA cases and it weighs about nine and a half pounds. Next up, a 70s style flying V. The leading photo tries to show you what they're doing up here on the headstock with a light reflection but it appears to be a green finish that has some sparkle flake thrown on top that seems to be a little bit larger than normal, like this is really big metal flake. Looks like we've got dark blue, light blue, and some silver specks. That thing would definitely come to life in person. The black pick guard's a good combination as well, and you get your binding on the neck. And that's a gloss refin, and they did it everywhere. But they wanted almost a thousand dollar premium for it. I saw this Phoenix Fireburst get posted around a few times. This is a particularly nice wide flame top. Guitar Center has an exclusive tri-burst color that looks kind of similar. It's either that or this was some sort of a cherry sunburst that didn't quite get enough stain right here. That's why it was thrown to the demo shop to be reworked and then they added the border. Whatever its origin story is, wait till you see the back. It's got a traditional stinger. That's always good on a Gibson USA. Nice tight mahogany wood grain on that one too. So all that and a $100 discount, I'd say that one was worth it. Following that, a burnt orange metallic SG special. It's a slightly more exciting finish than what we've had in the past. Very Halloween, they should have saved that one. And hey, they threw witch hat knobs on it just for good measure. And it was a complete refinish top and back. But speaking of spooky scary things, here's a non-reverse Thunderbird 8-string. That's right, you heard me right, 8-string. It was 4,000 bucks called Octane Sparkle. This was the first guitar to sell this week because it was so unique. Let's see what we've got going on here, okay. A racing stripe and a sparkly blue finish, but they had to give us a new logo up here with a matching headstock. So many tuners up here, but we've got two different sets of Grover tuners. And then there we go. It's an eight string bass. So if you're curious how that works, it's just like a 12 string guitar. Everything has been doubled. So you're playing octaves and or the same string, depending on which set you're talking about. But if that's not crazy enough for you, Gibson has in the past made 12 string basses for famous people. Here's a pretty Striker Pearl SG Standard. Well, at least that's what they called it. It's actually a custom. And I thought that one was priced kind of cheap. I wonder if they mixed it up due to the titling. It appears we've got some sort of a white pearlescent finish, all white plastics, no pick guard, just to make it look a little bit different. But then you still get your fancy sideways vibrola. The whole black and white effect of the fretboard works well with our headstock. And it's all white on the back with open back tuners. It's got a nice angelic vibe. 
Then they had a J45 standard, which honestly doesn't look that different, but they say the modifications consist of a custom fire stripe pick guard and an upgraded case. Seems kind of weak coming out of the mod collection. However, I will say that case looks kind of cool. It's got the old Supreme style case handle. It looks fancy, but cheap at the same time. <laughs> I'd have to see the interior. Perhaps that was a prototype case that they just decided, nah, we don't like that one. Let, let's refine it further. But if semi hollows are more your style, they had a Barn Burner 335. So at first it's like, yeah, nice light brown color. That always looks good on one of these. But then, oh, headstock has been completely ambered over and it appears to be a full on gloss finish. So that tells us all the lacquer is probably pretty tinted on this thing. But then when we flip it over to the back, we've got pretty much more of the same stuff. But there's something up here on the headstock. I'm not familiar with what it is, but it kind of reminds me of the Widow Les Paul or the Cobra. But since it's not animal influenced, it's not something I was looking to buy. There was one for the lefties, a standard 60s in deep ocean kelp. Kind of reminds me of the sunken treasure Les Paul, but this is a very dark green finish and they've got those dark amber knobs. Cream plastics work pretty well. And nice, we've got the full reef in. But here's another standard in righty. This one they called Red Ebony. That's quite a confusing name. Let's take a look at it together. Just kind of looks like ebony. We've got a zebra bobbin in the back and they have aged hardware on here. Is it going to be red on the back? Nope. So maybe it has a color shift or maybe there's a red clear coat over top of the black that you can only see in person. From these photos, I really couldn't tell you. Unless this started as Cherry Sunburst and they just completely sprayed it over black like the story of the original Black Burst. Because you can still see a little bit of cherry right here. M maybe that's what they did. If Gibson wanted to do a really cool series on Instagram or YouTube, they should have the mod collection guys do a video log telling about the inspiration of each of these or why they chose to do it. I mean, maybe not every single one, but maybe some of the crazier ones. But a P90s or more your style, here's Lavender Trance. This kind of reminds me of one of those tributes we saw a couple of weeks back. But this time it's full on Les Paul standard, but without the pick guard. And that appears to be a satin finish on the back. So that's probably a satin on the top now that I look at it. But since the regular standard 50s don't come in a satin finish, it leaves me conflicted on what price point we should be comparing it to. No matter what, it's at least a $100 premium. But if USA standards aren't your style, here's a Custom Shop 57 reissue, so normally it'd be a gold top. But now we've got Papaya Burst. Got some orange, red, a little bit of black, but yet a natural back, although heavily tinted it appears. I guess at 500 bucks off, we won't complain. And then if we go back to the mod collection page, we saw all our new ones this week, but for a brief point in time, they had the older ones slightly sectioned off over here. They ended up fixing that. And so I was looking at what was still available, and then this thing caught my attention. All natural. I don't remember talking about this one before. I vaguely remember seeing the color title, but I thought that was a while ago. But I would remember seeing this, so I'm not sure if this is part of this week, or maybe it was uploaded at a off time, but that is a really cool looking top. Tons of mineral streaks everywhere, lots of wood grain lines, some fairly even figuring. It just gets broken up by all the craziness. I like it. But then the back, it's got a double stinger. <laughs> that thing's pretty cool. Now, if you're curious, a Les Paul Standard, 5,000 bucks. You gotta remember, this is a custom shop Les Paul Standard. So it's not Gibson USA level production. It's a step above in the custom shop, and that's about what they go for. So having the whole double stinger thing, it's an all right deal but that was birthed in early 2020. But how about the European demo shop? What did they have going on for them this week? There was a non-reverse Thunderbird. However, we're not sharing this one because it was converted to eight strings. We're sharing it because of this. I don't know what happened to that headstock, but wow, that's why it's in the demo shop. It's also got a ding back here. That was definitely loaned out to an artist or something. This black Les Paul Classic, really good deal for that market. 1550, everything included. This J45 was quite shocking. Not only is it a 12 string, apparently it's a lefty too. <laughs> you just gotta watch the slantedness here, since we don't have a pick guard to help guide our eyes. But if you didn't catch it by that, you can see all your strings are reversed. So that is one very niche limited market guitar for sure. But for 1700 bucks, there was a very beautiful 61 SG from the USA original collection. That's just got some really good wood grain. The back's interesting, but I love that top. And then as far as SG Moderns are concerned, this had an interesting color scheme and top. Very stripey. But to round out tonight's episode, we need a look at the original USA demo shop. So first off, screaming deal on an Adam Jones standard if you're still looking for one of those. 2400 bucks, that's like $600 off. And it just has relatively minor things wrong with it. But my friends, the first demo shop 80s Flying V, an 80s Explorer has occurred. They're about 400 bucks off, 
Honestly, I feel like they should have launched these things at $19.99 after reviewing and documenting them. You can check out these episodes if you need to learn my thoughts and opinions. But I'm really excited for these things to make it to the mod collection. Somebody had commented that on the video reviews, and I'm with them. Let's give these things crazy colors. Let's rebirth the designer series, but in a new way. I think Gibson could sell a lot of these out of the mod collection, just spruced up a little bit. There was also a 70s Flying V, if that's more your style. If it's the same price as the 80s, I mean, you might as well get the pick guard and binding and everything. They also had a Deep Purple Les Paul Classic. That's a Gibson.com exclusive, but this time they played with our plastics and knobs and switch tips and all that other good stuff to make it, honestly, a little bit of a jumbled mess, but it's interesting. This Appetite Burst was phenomenal. That is a great top. I like that one. But there was a pretty cool Firebird Custom. Looks like they put a Bigsby on it and changed up our pickups a little bit. I think that's the first time we've seen them do that. And then I just thought this was a Black 59 335 reissue. But then I clicked on this photo and was like, oh, Brunswick Red. So that is going to be a really dark red sparkle. Doesn't look like we have the matching headstock, but you've got it everywhere else. Speaking of sparkly finishes, I was shocked to see one of these. A Matoba Wataru SG Standard Base? Do you guys remember this review and demo, the Argo Novice Blue Burst R9? This was kind of the sister model to that release. It was a Gibson USA standard base, and it just looks like a white EBO. However, if you really get into it, it came stock from the factory. This is not some crazy mod collection refinish job. It just came with these sparkles. Looks like we got a small ding in the corner. I did want to review this model, but I was scared after import duties and taxes, it would just get too expensive to find a new home for it afterwards. So that would have been cool to have caught in the demo shop. And lastly, I thought this was a pretty fair price. $47.99 on one of the RO reissues. Keep in mind, those were like $6,500 brand new. But you have to live with a few small chips around the nut. And this eyesore. <laughs> they could have just said, oh yeah, this is a light Murphy age and charge you a premium. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.